That was all the lore for today, boys. Hope you enjoyed the lore. All right. Okay, chat, chat. If the video was more calm and more like a like, relaxed whatever chat, we could watch it tonight. It was, it was good, so I believe it, but I don't know. It's a long video, so we could watch it maybe later tonight when we're more like in the chill mood. It feels like a symptom of loneliness, like people want company. I actually watch your streams every fucking day, just so I don't feel lonely. I'm addicted to forming parasocial relationships with female streamers on Twitch. Especially the Asian ones. See, I think this is possible now. The internet that was once an escape from real life has become a platform embodying an ongoing epidemic of loneliness. In my last video, I explored the virtual companionship sites like OnlyFans provided to mostly lo Chad, this is all- we could watch all this, right? Only men. And as many of you pointed out, these pseudo relationships span across the entirety of the internet. Live streaming on platforms like Twitch closely emulates the dynamic of friendship and community between viewers and streamers, creating the illusion of a social relationship. Viewers are drawn to streamers' personalities hey! and for who the, the fuck is this fucking handsome fella? Interact with them. Guys, I have a parrot social relationship with this fucking guy, dude. I want to kiss him, dude. Even if they are limited to only using a chat box. A live stream streamer. broadcast is not designed for one-on-one -on -one interactions. It's designed for an audience. So in trying to make sense of this gap, I decided to interview a few streamers, some large, some small, as well as viewers of theirs in order to explore their perspective on the strange social landscape created by live streaming. I've also volunteered myself as a test subject of sorts, as both a streamer and a viewer to better understand the psyche on both sides of the screen. When it comes to these screens <laughs> and the way we interact with them, the relationships between people often shift from being social to parasocial. The term parasocial invokes images of a creepy, fiendish parasite latching onto you, sucking out your blood, and showing no remorse for whatever damage it may inflict. And Hold up! That gets MSF the donation, I'm so sorry, dude. Okay, but Jesus, the money isn't important. What's important is that everyone I love in this chat and you and Felix, I, I have a hard, I, I have, I, I have had a hard time in the past right now, but who hasn't, honestly? I love you, chat and Felix. Much, dude, thanks so many times. I'm sorry about that, man. Sorry for missing it. It's today was pause because we want to watch something. Thanks a million times with big love. Chat tag a cup of juice and chat with a big pog you. And in some ways, that's an accurate description. The term was first used by psychologists in the 1950s in reference to the media at the time. Long before live streaming on the internet was popular, television shows, movie stars, and radio personalities played a similar role in captivating the attention of viewers and okay. listeners, who were often drawn in because on some level they felt some connection with the broadcasters. Where I'm going, you can't follow. What I've got to do, you can't be any part of. It'll oh, no good at being noble, but it doesn't take much to see Last the time problems I of three. Great, great. I think you're the only, you're the only one I didn't talk to. Uh, you say, I hope you're doing good, man. Much love, dude. These little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. In effect, those forms of media were creating a similar environment to what the live streamers of today are. A performative, one-sided form of communication that doesn't facilitate social reciprocity. What I mean by that is, as a viewer, you watch a streamer over the course of many hours, days, or even years. You listen to what the streamer has to say, maybe you even grow to like their personality, and maybe you care for them as you would care for a friend. And yet, the streamer knows next to nothing about you, and does not share the same level of interest in you. And how could they? To them, you're primarily just a name in a chat box. It's easy to True. forget that behind these names are real, live people. Yeah, I feel like if I'm watching, you know, like Ninja or Shroud or someone like that, I'm watching a show. Whereas if I'm watching Asmongold, I'm watching a person. Live streaming attracts viewers for two main reasons, entertainment and interaction. Larger streams with tens of thousands of viewers tend to crank the entertainment factor all the way up, but it comes at the cost of interaction Oh my fucking God. Viewers. What's up? So what kind of social environment do smaller streams facilitate? I did get a wig, yes. 
I like occasionally do this thing called a hair worn stream where Chai gets to choose like the color of the wig. Um, streamers who only have like 10 people in their chat, you actually, for the more, like most part, you become more of uh, a kin of friends, if you will. If you're a massive True. streamer, you're getting that quadruple average digits. Even if you want to get to know your chat, your chat's going like, brrr, like you can't even. It it becomes really difficult for you. When you're small, you got two guys in your chat, and that's their name, just repeating over and over and over again. Chat. So whether look, you look at me. want to chat, even even when I had like a hundred viewers, um, hundred fifty, right? When I was, it was really, I knew almost every viewer, like every possible one chatted. Or, or not. I knew how they did. I could be like, I said this with a crazy lot of chatters. But two guys, you're reading their not, names I, over and over again. You're going to eventually see them as like, yeah, that's that guy. Gamer57, that's him. I'm slowly starting to get to know him. With smaller streams, it feels more like a group of people hanging out rather than just getting lost in the abyss of walls and stuff, mostly. But no. I'm a really. I feel cozy person when it comes to my stream and I'm open and honest and I think people really like that. Like, I'm not putting on an act. I'm just an exaggerated all of them, of myself. I, I don't know. Kazooie you know. Girl and Bobber WCC are both smaller streamers with active communities. By talking to them and their viewers, I got the sense that they were using the site with a mutual interest in forming meaningful relationships within these live streaming communities. It's a great way to meet friends, but not actually like be stuck there if it's an awkward situation. So it's like almost a social outlet for you, it sounds like. Oh yeah, I, I stay in my room like 24 seven. I rarely, rarely try to get out. I like, I prefer to watch also small streamers like Bobber where the community can be really small. Kazooie Girl also shared insight into the strange expectations new viewers have, and how Twitch as a platform seems to cater to sex appeal based streamers over gaming. Okay, based dude, streamers. Fuck, man. I do find Twitch definitely favors them over female gaming streamers, if you want to put it. And it, it is extremely frustrating. I try not to voice my frustrations over it because I think a lot of people are definitely defensive about like titty streamers and saying they're doing nothing wrong and stuff women should be allowed to express their bodies but I do think there's other places for that and it's giving Twitch a bad name Why, In recent uh, guys, guys, I don't want to be a simp or whatever I don't agree with this I, I don't agree with that pick like titty streamers and saying they're doing nothing wrong and stuff women should be allowed to express their bodies but i do think there's other places for that and it's giving twitch a bad name in, in my guys guys when the intention is pure it's completely fine nobody has any trouble with it the problem to me is only when there's there's a significant effort into deliberate baiting that's the issue. It's the baiting of like, oh, oh, yeah, I have a husband, but nah, dude, I, dude I'm looking for a relationship, dude. Oh, 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 uh, let's say this guy in chat? Yeah, I mean, um, dude, you know, maybe you never know. Like, that's baiting. I, 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 think, I think that's, that's, a okay, welcome platform to more sexualized female oh, streamers. Said it. The popularization of streamer girls who use their sex appeal as the main draw for viewers seems to bring upon unintended consequences to gamer girls like Kazooie Girl, who have absolutely no intentions of advertising themselves sexually or playing into that type of fantasy at all, and yet that seems to be what viewers on Twitch have been conditioned to expect from all girl streamers. Guys, I, I wear guys, like I see a bunch of people that are against my take. Okay, guys, I have to stop it one more time. So last time. Guys, you understand that sometimes dude, some, some, maybe not all of them, are just generally like really into like themselves and they're like into like beauty, dude. And they love their own juicers and they probably got them like or, or did redone, right? And and they're passionate about their own body, dude. And I think that's kind of fine, dude. I, I think that's a, just the same way as males did. It, if they go to the gym often and they take a great passion into their body, they they take like you know you know those shirts that go like this. 
Yeah, I get it. It's not sexual by nature, but it's the same root behavior of being in love and passionate about their own body and wanting to show it, dude. I think that's kind of fine as long as it doesn't have malicious intent behind it. And so a lot of times it's easy to see when there's a malicious intent behind it. Twitch merch out in public, people will ask me, are you a streamer? And I'll say yes, and they'll be like, oh, are you like one of those streamers? That's like the first question I get. And that's just what Twitch has become now. Don't agree. While making this video a fascinating case study directly tied to the abundance of suggestive streamers and parasocial relationships has come to light, and it's worth taking a deep dive into. A hardcore okay. Twitch viewer, Eric Estavio, filed a civil suit against the site, seeking $25 million for regular exposure to suggestive streamers, provided by Twitch. This guy's joined it's also in. worth noting that he sued Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, Nintendo and Blizzard in the past, and he's won none of those cases. Interestingly, in the complaint, it is stated that Eric suffers from depression, OCD, panic disorder, agoraphobia, Crohn's disease, and sex addiction. Due to this, he spends all day viewing Twitch streams, following a whopping 786 female streamers and zero male streamers. He asserts that Twitch has exacerbated his condition by constantly displaying suggestive streamers to him, which he can't avoid being exposed to when online. It doesn't take a lawyer to uh, figure out that King lawsuits Coomer, such as this one hold no legal weight, but it does serve as an interesting form of activism. Interestingly, this lawsuit, which ultimately is a statement of the power certain female streamers have over men, comes out around the same time as Twitch and YouTube's very own Me Too movement of sorts, wherein dozens of girls in these communities are sharing their stories and ousting men who were allegedly involved in sexual misconduct. A few Twitch streamers have already been banned as a result of these stories coming out. Ah! Online platforms certainly make for a strange and tumultuous type of social dynamic. While more meaningful social interactions do occur amongst smaller streams, one of the most popular streamers on Twitch, Asmongold, has a more unique approach, making a point of trying to facilitate as much social reciprocity between him and his viewers as possible. Alright, Asmin, you take ads then. Oh, I'm taking ads? Like the ads and Fuck, man. Encouraging interaction and community events despite having tens of thousands of viewers. I, I think a differentiation here that you could maybe use for me is that I try to look at people instead of, instead of fans, I look at them as viewers, right? Yeah, it see, doesn't necessarily this. imply the same type of worship as a, as a fan does. You know, fan is obviously uh, short for fanatics. So I, I don't like that. I, I treat all of my viewers and just people that are watching my stream as just like guys that I would probably maybe hang out with or, or not and if certain people I feel are being uh, too attached in a way that I feel is unhealthy and you know in terms of like I guess what you would call a parasocial relationship that's uh, definitely not something that I want to promote but I think that having a healthy relationship with your viewers and even having that be a one-on-one -on -one thing is completely okay as long as the people that are going into it both have the same level of expectation. I'd go and I'd do like a pickup group with, with Asmin and like I said I'd add these people on BTAG after and they just over time became like my regular WoW friends and I wouldn't have met them if it weren't for Asmin Gold, um, which I think is something that I can't really stay for a lot of other streamers. But when attracting dozens of thousands of Fucking live viewers, so there's only so much interaction one person can provide. I had fears that Dude. one day I'm just going to fall off and I'm not going to be any entertaining anymore and that people aren't going to want to watch me or that people aren't going to like me. Mizkif is one of the largest streamers on Twitch, but unlike Asmongold and many others, he got to that position in a very short amount of time. When I feel like people like me, Poke, Greek, XUC, we have this relatability of people that they feel like they could be friends with, people that they feel that they could know, and that makes them more inclined to watch us over other people. I think the reality is this when it comes to Twitch, you can never blame the viewers. You you can't blame 10,000 people. Like, it's just not a thing. You can't blame your chat for anything because the reality is 
you are in control and you have to be able to figure out what to do and what not to do. For Ms. Kiff and many other popular streamers- oh, the I play y'all motherfuckers all the time, dude! That's the fucking selling my fuck y'all sometimes, man! Viewers are a collective known as the chat. Representing the sometimes tens of thousands of people watching, the chat room is a living reaction to everything a streamer is saying. So if I put coal there and I put iron there, pop champs and chat occur. Interestingly, that audience also seems to attract some viewers with similar goals to the streamer, where being noticed and acknowledged by the streamer amongst thousands of other viewers provides an elevated level of attention and validation they seek out. Oh yeah, I type a lot. You could ask any, you could ask a streamer like Miss Kiff or... Oh. Chat, let's see chat if this guy's ever been here before. Look at this, ready? I'm pretty sure he has. Use doesn't exist. Oh, Iron Man plays. <gasps> Holy shit, dude! Look at this guy, dude. When was this? Oh, that was right now. Pepe laugh, air out. Pepe laugh, dude. Look at this fucking guy, dude. Begging for getting subs. Lol. Look at the spamas. Look at him, dude. Holy shit, he's rabid. Hope lost because they are very fond of me typing a lot in chat. Because I'm VIP in there. A lot of viewers are sometimes annoyed by me or they love me a lot because I can be really entertaining to the chat. Um, I think having a streamer notice you in chat is always interesting, just in general. Makes you feel good or something. He turned his head, he looked me straight in the eye! The chat can be a source of great confidence and support, but it can also be a source of great distress and headache, as Ms. Kiff explained to me. But I think some people that really try to get a friend out of me are people that donate to me like crazy, right? Like, you'll have some of these guys that gift me thousands and thousands of dollars in gifted subs or in general. And those people want either a lot of attention, which is why they do it, or they typically want to be my friend, right? They're trying to um, buy their way into my life. I, I guess I don't necessarily agree. For some reason, most big sub leaders here, dude, they, 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 they're kind of invisible. I've had multiple people give me tons of money and then like, hey, dude, do me a favor, can you host me afterwards? Or, hey, dude, can you do me a huge favor? Can you, uh, you know, just I, I answer my DMs? And they start DMing me. And then what am I going to do? You know, I feel guilty that this guy's going to be thousands of dollars and I'm not going to just answer his messages. But over time, it becomes more and more and more that they're just trying to bother me and just trying to get my attention constantly. Um, and that's not, you can't, just because you give me money doesn't mean I'm going to be your friend or play games with you or hang out with you. That's not how it works. You know, in my own experiment, okay, having chat, just a chat in, in my own experience, chat when things like that happened, I did the same thing I do with most people, dude. I just answer whenever I would answer an acquaintance, that's it. And they just kind of stops there. And then I find it. active viewers made it nearly impossible because I don't want, I don't want to emulate behavior that I'm trying hard to answer to get to continue getting donations, and I don't want and and, and maintain a, a, a fake friendship, but. I can still want answers answer sometimes. Right? I answer whenever I would answer anybody. And I, honestly, it's been kind of fun. Yo, 20! 20 gifted rock stones by somebody with a name that I'm not gonna say. Fuck you, dude. Hey, no attention for you, dude. Try again! Try 100 something, time. Possible to engage with people in the chat on an individual level. This is where the call to response type relationship with viewers arises from. How old is everybody in here? Type your age in the chat. Go ahead, type your age in the chat. I wanna know how old each of you guys are. 54, 21, 23, 25. Nice, you guys are 
kind of in my age range. Good job. Oh, no, no, Smart no, no. dance Just game key right. emoji. Find your house emoji. Up no, no, no. was arrow. Back was arrow. Dance game. What face? <laughs> this type of communication turns individual viewers into a collective hive mind. Even before the popularity of live streaming, this type of linear communication was used by TV shows, especially children's cartoons. ¿En qué camino está la casa de los osos? ¿En el camino rojo o azul? ¿Rojo o azul? Taking this a step further, a lot of streamers will use terms like we or us when addressing their chat because they want viewers to feel like they are part of the same collective group as the streamer. We do what we do, and I say we because it is a community thing. It is an us thing. It's not just me, it's we, right? Because I can't, I can only do half of it. The other half is you guys coming in and watching. I have this very, very fun behavior. Our handy I do that, and I explain why later. Notebook! With the Twitch Prime! Chat, chat. Be chat, hold up. Before he feeds me the answer, right? I'll tell him why I do it, okay? So sometimes I wouldn't play a game. I wouldn't start something. I wouldn't do something if I was on my own, right? The motivation to start it, or the idea, and then the motivation, and then the, the energy incentive to continue and to finish comes from chat. You know, the action comes from me. It's why it's an us, it's not a me. I'm not fucking, you know? Because I can't. I can only do half of it. The other half is you guys coming in and watching, right? We need our handy dandy notebook. notebook. With the Twitch Prime. I think we have 50,000. We're going to the bear's house with a very sleepy bear. However, despite this type of language, the streamers are very much in their own social bubble. Popular streamers are on a virtual stage, and the audience is watching from their seats. If your job was to broadcast for several hours every single day to thousands of viewers, you too might develop an unhealthy view of yourself in relation to others. Lost all of my uh, connections to people, so I just... Very lonely a lot. It's, it's sad, but that's just how it is. If to be when you you gotta make a lot of sacrifices, and if you're not already a relationship before you start streaming or during streaming, then it's really hard to find someone new. You haven't been outside in a very long time. Uh, you know, streamers in general it and I think like YouTubers are in our own bubble because our world does revolve around us. As much as we don't want to say that, it does, and. You know, I, I, I stopped Way talking to my grandma as much as I wish I did, and she died recently, and I was like, crap. Like, I definitely should have called her more, I definitely could have done more stuff, but I'm just so obsessed with my job that it stopped that, and then my I also job. don't call my family as much because of uh, streaming constantly. Having thousands of people regularly watching you also tends to make them very invested in your personal life. These viewers became obsessed with our relationship. Obsessed obsessed it was bad and i hated it i absolutely hated how obsessed these viewers came over uh, about my relationship i i didn't realize how much of an impact it would have and a lot of youtube uh channels started to take our videos and were like oh my god maya and Ms. Gift talked and they were getting like quarter million half million views and all it was talked about on live stream fails and twitch was me and maya yeah it definitely affected my community pretty hard. Streamers are just one of many different types of celebrity to experience these highs and lows. A celebrity's ego and sense of importance is inflated by the attention of others, while at the same time their personal life evaporates away, being absorbed by that same attention. I spoke with one final popular streamer who has a trait that separates him from his peers. Connor Eats Pants doesn't just tell his viewers that he's one of them, he actually embodies that role without showing his body at all. Connor doesn't use face cam on stream, and so the level of separation between him and his viewers is far less. I'm the, I'm the everyman streamer, you know? I feel like maybe in some way not having a camp makes it more of like a collaborate like they you feel more involved like you're active like you're seeing your chat messages go on the screen with other people it's like this isn't just watching Connor this is a group of people enjoying this and hey, making chat, the stream chat 
as much as I sort of agree with this, sort of, I actually like the entertainment for me and chat. But sometimes I get to be the commander. What a face. I get, I did it. Sometimes I get to lead the charge. Yo, that, it did it. And it's thing for me and chat. You know, it happened. The way Connor the got into Twitch also seems to reflect the reasons many of his viewers have done the same. The reason I always came to streams is the same reason that I stream. I came to streams because I wanted either something on in the background, something that is funny in the chat that oh, I can. Wait, who is this guy? The reason I always came to streams is the same reason that I stream. I came to streams because oh. I wanted either something on in the oh. background, something that is funny in the chat that I can mess around in. Basically, just forget about my day and relax and have a good time. And so now I try to provide that same thing to others. And so my intention, I would say, is never to have people <laughs> unhelpful live through me, I guess. It's always, I've always put out my stream to be for people like me. As a viewer, Connor sought out Twitch because it was an escape from his real life. But now as a streamer, it's the real world, which he occasionally feels the need to escape into. It's almost on a reverse now where like I get afraid if I ever screw up online I want to be able to escape back to my real life and just turn off the computer or something oh, okay. I mean that's obviously a fear um not that I do anything bad but you know you see people just get absolutely destroyed on the internet for a mistake and it's like oh man like I'm that's that's a scary thought and that same escapism is what fuels the desires of many twitch viewers who spend significant portions of their lives sitting there watching streams and trying to participate in these online communities how much time do you spend on twitch um uh, like on average a day or a week if you can estimate that probably like four to five hours a day so a week would be 35 hours because i try to avoid people like the plague i i do spend a good amount of my time watching streams um back when i was like playing wow i'd have them on in the background especially asmongold so they'd be on for a long time mm, i think over the past three years i've used up a lot of my time Thanks on twitch and it's, it's made me feel very, very different i guess I, I don't know how to describe it like uh, I, i've lost a lot of time just sitting there trying to be dedicated to twitch channels at the same time chat these are rookie numbers okay these are rookies okay four or five hours you really did because mo i feel like most people also you know what they do you do that i do that don't i you don't do it chat i don't give a fuck that you do that okay you leave the tab open and you barely listen when it's on the side of your screen and you do some other shit a homework or whatever what the fuck dude right and you and you you actually tune in to watch when we're getting the actual juice right otherwise it's completely tuned out right and i noticed that 100 when we played um death stranding the game show was really good so everybody was captivated we had a lot of viewers everyone was looking at the game when it was cutscenes, and then i would walk for hours and the chat would like die down and it was fucking sleeper right there was this time that i've never seen a big difference between walking and cutscenes it was like like dude i don't even know like um 300 messages 300 me messages a second or something or like 50 and cutscenes it was like 4000 messages like Holy shit, man, that was crazy. That's why I really noticed that that effect. I would say that having friends is way better than having the attention because you have people that you can actually talk to and ha get good attention from instead of like the attention for like two seconds. They get that doesn't really what? mean anything. The experience of these viewers isn't so different from Connor's, it's not so different from Ms. Kiff's, Next and it's rock. not so different from people I know who spend all day watching streams or videos. And that's not to say that spending time online is always bad, or that there aren't great things that can come of your time spent in these online communities. Because there certainly are. Um, and then over time, it's like I was part of a bunch of groups. I found a bunch of amazing people. I ended up incredibly luckily meeting uh, an amazing like group of streamers. Uh, it got to the point where we've met together like at least 10 times easily. We go to conventions together. I realized that the names behind the screen can turn into an actual real life friend. There's no difference chat. between real life friend and like name on screen. Chat, you know what chat? I, okay, I'm sorry for stopping you again dude, chat. I had two streams, okay? 
So you guys don't know this, but my league streams, okay? It's like I was a complete streamer. That is completely different from, it was like a, an entire life of its own. Before I, I was doing whatever I'm doing right now, right? And um, I used to play league. Yo, you're crazy, dude, 20. 20 gifted fucking water slides, right? And I would play games and I met like people through like uh, to the stream that I would duel with and play with and talk to on, 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 on TeamSpeak, right? Up to the point where like we, we went in real life, you know, and we would hang out and shit like that. And they actually became like my, my actual real life friends, you know? Right. And then I switched over watching and, you know. You can reach the same level of intimacy. Forming meaningful relationships online is possible. I myself have made many good friends after spending years of my life in various online communities. I've even met friends in person many times who live thousands of miles away, and some of my closest friends are online friends. But admittedly, forming long-lasting relationships can be difficult. The physical distance between people online will always add an extra layer of separation. In my own life, where I work and communicate with others Smoke. online, it's a daily struggle to balance time spent looking at screens and time spent in the present. Underlying the issue of online parasocial relationships is a global shift in human communication that no one was prepared for. The world has changed so much, but people have not. We still seek out communities, companions, and camaraderie even if it's through a screen. The social opportunities that were once afforded to the previous generations have all but eroded away. Social gatherings, public venues, and face-to-face -face interactions that were once the foundations of community are rapidly fading away in place of more logistically efficient methods. The people and places of the past are the virtual friends of viewers today. Humans themselves are slowly being written out of the equation. The great challenge of technology and our time is in emerging from the chasm of isolation, which is so easy to fall into, and instead form connections nice that we can find meaning in. What bot? We have no great reward, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. Topics like this interest me because for years I've experienced what I'm talking about and I know many others who have as well. I've been a viewer, I've even been a streamer, but I find the most meaning in making these kinds of videos even if it takes the most amount of time and effort to do. I don't have any sponsors. I actually think that they cheapen the message of a good video, so I might as well sponsor myself. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all the patrons who support me, which you can see here. And I would also like to thank everyone I interviewed. Chat. Ms. Kiff, Asmongold, Connor, Hello. Kazooie Girl, Chat, this, this isn't really advice to him, it's just my thoughts on this. My thoughts on YouTube um, video sponsors, if you, even at the beginning or over time, tell the people, dude, that YouTube ad rev and YouTube system is fucking trash and you have to do it, to, to, and, and it's like a, it's something that, that, that needs to happen, right? You can like soften how much people will discredit the video and how much for money is it gonna be because of yo, you know? Move cam. Ah, oh, you guys are so fucking stupid, dude. Oh, Bobber, Ant Plays, Zaz, Coco, and Peter. I will be uploading some of these interviews to my second channel in full, and they were very interesting, insightful conversations that I think you'll enjoy. I also want to give a shout out to my friend VH21 for helping a lot with research and finding clips for this video. And I want to thank you guys, the viewers, for watching my stuff and supporting me in any way that you can. Until next time, I wish you guys the best of luck on your journey through the internet. Just don't spend too much time watching other people. True. Now, chat. Now, I think this is a decent time to talk about this, didn't it? This is why. It's why I thought sponsors 
will be worse with a community like you guys that are more active and talk or more like actually there than like a bot like followings that are like long behind sub mode and people that don't because people most people have a head on their shoulders and if something is trash whatever i say about it doesn't matter because they can compute it right and they're not gonna buy something that is garbage and and one of, the, one of those realizations, one, one time we did a, did a sponsor and um, people, people could snipe, right? And could buy the game. And out of 35k viewers at the time, there was three snipers. Three. There was three snipers total. Because the, the game wasn't that good. The game was just not very good. So nobody bought it, right? It made me realize that out of 30 people did it, <laughs> 3 people only would show up. <laughs> even though even though the chat and the viewers here are more active. Right. The yeah, actual pog that takes a 20 subs at BP and average a lot many times man. Okay, I just bugged my alerts right now, but it's okay. Okay. That was good chat. Let's give it up. Pog, 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 clap. I don't know why I'm playing it again. That was pretty good. Been ready for months. What is next? Maybe five XQCL. Hot takes on illusional. What is that? XQCTL. What is it? Hot takes on illusional personal relationship. What does that mean? Illusional. When the stream makes an effort Let's into into legitimately baiting XQCL. fake relationships, or whatever. Is that what you mean? No one that create an actual or just a Sega Dragon Pop Cannon. Yeah, I I that can be, I, I I don't agree with it. I think it's kind of dumb. You can do something by 